Welcome back to another episode of GL Rustic Design. Today's episode is going to be a hall tree with some cubbies and some drawers. Um, so first we start off by doing the back. Uh, this hall tree is going to measure about seven foot tall um, and about five-ish foot wide. Um, I'll, I'll link everything below, uh, measurements. Uh, also don't forget to, to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. channel. Really helps me out, really helps me grow. Um, but to jump into the video, so I've done the back first. Um, I use pocket holes to assemble. I use all white pine, one by twelves, um, to assemble the whole back. And then I'm here. I'm drawing really just to find out where I need to put my screws um, to run. Start from the bottom, and I work my way to the top. Um, so here I use two and a half inch screws. Um, this will hold um, the bottom bench, the outside uh, skirt to the bench. As you see, this is probably the trickiest part because you have to hold the back wall as you um, attach the two sides. Uh, so all the benches I do for hall trees, they're about 18 inches tall. That includes the top. So this piece is something like 17 and a quarter. Um, so I just kind of use these blocks um, as a reference because I know I'm going to come back and put trim on the outside at a later point. Uh, so I know it has to be about three-fourths inch in um, but I just use a block because it's the same wood that I'm going to use later so so here um, I use uh, I use uh, all torch screws um, besides the pocket holes and then I just drill those to the back do that to both sides once you do that um, you, you can begin um, doing the face if you did not want drawers here um, then you could you could still do the face, but you can just put a solid bottom in the in the in the bottom of it. Um, but so I just um, I ripped the pine one by twelves down uh, to where I put a face on it. Um, this whole hall tree has four different um, locker style cubbies, top and bottom. So here I'll just use pocket holes again to measure I find the middle uh, so since I'm doing four different sections it's easy just to find the middle uh, with one of the trim pieces and then you find the middle again of the half and then you go to the other side and find the, the other middle um, just so that you know everything's even you really don't have to do the math you don't have to guess um, it just makes everything easy um, so once you get all those lined up um, you, you, tack, you screw those in with pocket holes again um, and then as you're doing the outside trim make sure that you put the pocket holes here so you can attach it and then also ones that go up so that you can later attach the bench down um, so once you get the side detached uh, here i drew all the lines uh, this is where all the drawers will go um, so really i just referenced the front um, where you see that i'm about to attach the one by two so i just referenced that to the back um, and that's how i found out um, where exactly I wanted the drawer slides to go um, So you do that to all the sides you'll end up having like six in total then you have to do the sides as well So it makes you end up having four different um, drawers that come in and out as you can see and Then so once you get that piece done um, You can move to the outside trim the trim the bottom and the tops the same They're just all different measurements uh, so here, I just use pocket holes, use face clamp. Um, like I said, measure the the depth of the hall tree, and then you uh, measure uh, how long that you want um, the height of the piece. Is what you see me attaching to the bottom. Um, so once you get those attached, you do the same for the top. Flip it over, same board. Make sure also I sand all this stuff down. Um, usually I'll I don't get too crazy with it. I'll go, you know, whatever, 120, 180 grit, something like that. Um, I'll link everything I use in the description below. And so once you get done with the trim, I said this, this is both sides. Um, you can attach that with uh, some inch and a quarter torch screws or whatever the screws you have laying around. Um, just make sure that they're not too short, but not too long to go through the side. Um, so once you attach those, I just use one at each corner, attach the outside trim. Um, 
And then once you get this piece done, um, you're ready to add the top. Uh, just kind of showing you the steps that we've got to so far. So I just cut me two boards, um, you know, let it stick out about an inch on each side. This will later be stained. Um, so here, um, I'm showing you how I attach the the lockers that come down from the top. So how each cubby is divided. Um, I went ahead and I done this step. Um, <clears throat> this is after you do where you want the lockers, or you, I mean, you could. They're going to be even with the face of the bottom that you've already done. Uh, but you'll actually take this uh, top bench back out once you get the lockers in if you're going to stain it i stained and i i cleared the the top of the bench um, so that i could spray paint um, the rest of the hall tree white if you want the whole thing white this step doesn't matter um, but or the the step that taking the, the bottom out but here you see me attaching the back lockers again it's just a solid one by 12. Um, you'll do that one and then you'll do all to however many lockers you want um, once you do that, um, I'm showing you where I put the screws at, and that's what it'll look like once you get all those boards ran on. Um, and then you cut a piece for the top, however you know long you want the top. Um, attach the lockers from the top as well. And then once you do that, you can move on to the cubbies. So here you can do just top cubbies, leave it as it is. You can add doors. Um, uh, this customer in particular wanted doors at the top and then wanted open cubbies. So here I'm just showing, put all, run all the screws to the outside. The, the trim will come back later and hide, so you don't have to worry about seeing screw holes and whatnot. Um, so just straight across, um, done all the bottom cubbies, um, all the top cubbies, which will later be doors. Um, and then so you'll, uh, the next step is start on the face. Once you start on the face, just measure, uh, these are all inch and a half, um, strips uh, I start with the sides do the <coughs> excuse me do the left side right side um, and then you do the the middle boards which said all that link all those all my measurements make sure don't go by my measurements make sure you measure your own pieces um, I would hate to be off a quarter inch and it ruin your whole piece you know so make sure that you measure your own pieces here um, but I will add also um, one step I did not show here that I later came back and I have realized how to put um, is the divider in between each door that I used. Um, I'll point at it here in a second, but just a reminder to put that on the very top before you tack the face down because once you get the face down, it won't move. Um, so here, I'm just divide each cubby all again, inch and a half strips. Um, I'm just measuring, taking the measurement from what my hall tree is and I'm just bringing it down to the bottom. Um, and so on, making sure that they're all even. And so once you get that all measured out, um, I just use some brad nails, um, and I'll later come back and fill those in with wood putty, wood filler. Um, and so just shooting the um, nails through the face. You could, you could also use screws if you didn't have a nail gun. Um, just make sure that you fill the hole back in with wood putty or wood filler. Um, and then here is the example. It done, the face is on. Like I said, make sure that you go back and put the top. You see my pieces here that I'm pointing at. Make sure you put those on before you put the face on. Um, but so I pulled the bottom bench, the top of the bench out uh, so I can spray the whole thing white. Um, and then so the final step of the actual hall tree is to do the trim that goes on the very outside um, of the lockers. This trim is done the exact same way that the bottom trim is done. Um, just more pocket holes. Um, I think it's like inch and a quarter, inch and a half pocket holes. Um, this machine is my most used machine in the whole shop um, just because it's so versatile. But once you get that done, um, once you get it assembled, uh, you can either use same those same. I think I use brad nails um, and attach those to the outside. You could use screws from the inside. Um, I said just make sure you go back and fill in any any kind of hole um, so you can paint over it later so that you can't see um, you can't see any kind of nails or screws. So 
So your next step is, um, for me, was, and once you get the trim attached on the outside, um, you can see it on the side there. Uh, you can, I, I, I use a sprayer. You can, you can brush this whole thing if you want. For me, just using a sprayer is a whole lot quicker. And I had multiple other projects I had to paint as well. So, um, but here um, I use the Graco X7 uh, Magnum sprayer. The um, the sprayer has a dipstick that sits inside the bucket, and it just makes life so easy. Also, use Sherwin Williams Pure White paint. Um, makes it makes quick work. Usually, like one coat. Just make sure when you're getting inside all the doors and cubbies and whatnot that you turn the pressure down or else you'll blow paint everywhere. Um, but, you know, step by step, board by board, went through the whole thing, spray painted the whole thing white. You can stain it however you wish to finish it. Um, and then so once you get this step done, um, in the meantime, the top of the bench, you see it's missing there. It's sitting off to the side. I stained it special walnut by Minwax. And then I also came back and put polyurethane over the stained bench. Um, and then so uh, that's the very last thing that I put in. I've done all the drawers first. So here you see me putting in the drawer slides. There's so many different ways to do drawer slides. There's so many different ways to do the boxes. And there's so many different ways to actually do the shaker style doors. Um, but here I'm just showing you briefly how I do uh, my drawers. I just use half inch plywood glues and nail it's worked for me for many years um you know i've not any not had any complaints out of it um everything holds together so you know i don't want to change until until i need to but you can use pocket holes you can use whatever method that you feel comfortable with building drawers out of this is just how i do it um <clears throat> and then also the doors uh you can see in the background there um, I had already done the, the doors. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there that show you how to do shaker style doors um, by using a table salt. That's what I did. Um, it's too long of a process. I'll upload a different video another day showing how I done or how I do the shaker style doors on a table saw. Um, I'll actually only be doing that for not too much longer because I have a uh, shop saber CNC machine coming um within the next i'm about five or six weeks out so maybe my next video will be the video right before i get my machine in and of course i'll have videos of it running and what all it can do and whatnot so i'm super excited about that machine coming but like i said so here i'm building all the drawers just quickly showing you how i do my drawers um like i said the, the slides make sure the slides match up to where you put them on i, I put mine the top of um that one by that you, we stuck in there for the runner, um, I just mounted it to the top of that so I really didn't have to figure out any kind of math. Um, transferred that measurement onto the box. Um, so that's where the the drawer slide will need to be. Like I said, there's so many different ways to do this. Um, if you have a better, better method, that's fine. If you have a different way, I've changed ways three, four times and this is the way that I've done it for the last probably, probably two years or so. Um, but once you get those attached, those all just slide right in. Um, pretty simple. Uh, once you get those slid in, and then you can, once you get the bottom slid in, you can add the top, and then make sure that you go back on the inside. That should be showing you how I just put the handles on. They're just some T handles. Um, on the very inside of, you see the light and the, the impact. Um, I'm tacking down. From the bottom, I'm adding inch and quarter pocket screws to hold down the bench top, and that runs all along the front, um, the top piece there. But so here, this is just me attaching the doors that you previously seen. Um, I just used the Craig, um, this is called like a master bit for cabinet cabinet hinges, and so it just drew, it taps a hole. Um, you do the little two pinholes for the screws. Um, and then I'd probably recommend doing this before you painted it just so you don't scratch anything up. But, um, like I said, so the shaker, the shaker doors were done the exact same way that I referenced in a different YouTube video with, um, the table saw. And then I used that, that bit to make the, the hinges and put the doors on and then put the handles on. So, 
Um, as you can see me, I'll do the handles in just a second. But um, once again, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me out. It really helps me grow. Um, <clears throat> closing in to 500 subscribers. About to go over that mark. Um, you know, just just growing the channel. But again, thank you so much for the ones who watch the videos, who find this. If there's anything I need to know, anything that you want to ask, please feel free to drop a comment below. Um, thank you again for watching.